And okay, so we're going to find break even point, break even point, simply point uh, where revenue meets cost. So R of X would equal C of X. Sometimes calculate it with other times you can do this manually. Um, what would you do even though I asked you to use a calculator in this problem, which is easier? Doing it directly. You might wonder, well, if that is the case, why did he make us um, use a calculator? I want you to get used to it because as we move along, it's <coughs> not just going to be a linear function. Other functions require well, I wouldn't say require um, when we have other functions, things are easier with the calculator. Move that 5x to the other side, 15x minus 5x equals 20. X is 10 tacos. Oh, bad math. Two tacos, I got it. <laughs> Hungry. You want tacos? <laughs> exactly. My brain's there. Um, okay, so two tacos. Questions? Um, the next question. Even before you start the problem, um, you should sort of know the answer. At least you should be able to guess the answer. Um, could it be one taco? Nathan says no. Why not, Nathan? Yeah, if you put the C of X, the cost, that's, uh, you know, it's just you could do this, but I know where you're going, so just explain. Uh, you put one in X, that's $25. Mm -hmm. You put one in revenue, that's a negative five. Okay. I don't think anyone would pay $100 for a single taco. Okay. Fine. Here's some math. Um, hey, right? What's your name? Brady. Brady. Um, by now I should know. Troublemaker. Um, Brady is in fact correct. Um, but if you have to sort of guess an answer without even touching your calculator, you could do what Nathan suggested, plug in one. Or just think of the graph. Um, one is going this way, another that way. Yes. And both lines are increasing. This is a case that Corbin mentioned. I will come later. Here it is. Um, below the break even point, what do you expect to see? Is cost going to be bigger than revenue, or is revenue going to be bigger than cost? Very good. So Hypothetically, that is my point. Right, people. On this side, um, cost would be greater than revenue. That would indicate loss, correct? Negative value. On that side, to the right of break even. Revenue is going to be greater than cost. So profit. Let us see if you remember stuff from lecture three. I don't need separate equations for profit and loss. Why? So when you put a the answer here, last line or the time before. 
profit. Because a negative profit is a loss. Very good. A negative profit is simply loss. So all I need is this one equation. Um, B of X. Did we use P? I think it was something. So revenue bigger than cost, profit is positive. You have profit if revenue is less than cost, negative profit, not they are the same, profit is zero, break even. That said, how do we solve for that? The number of tacos that one has to sell in order to make a profit of $100. You plug in 100 for P of X. Very good. So 100 for profit on this side. 15 X. Why does that sound cool? 15 X. Okay, what okay is this? Plus or minus minus five. Minus five x plus 20. A few things that you've got to pay attention to. Number one, same students simply set revenue equals 100 and put the answer incorrect. Don't make that mistake. Don't be that student. Another is pretty algebraic. What am I missing there? Vincent? Very good. He listened to me. Uh, I'm a big proponent of parentheses and brackets. If you use them, you're not going to make mistakes. So use them. 15x minus 5x minus 20. 100. Eight tacos. Oh, I should be, uh, own that restaurant. I'm hypothesizing. I know the answer. Six tacos would result in a profit of five hundred dollars. I want you to tell me this is true or false. 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 Why is that? Uh, no. Okay. Wait. Interesting way of putting it. Okay. So Brooke. Looked up the break even point and loud it. Uh, after every taco, after two, it is $10 per taco, which means we pay $40. Okay, so Brock used this equation, profit equation, and said, well, after two tacos, every taco is going to give you a profit of $10. But even though it is a correct explanation, without using that explanation, would you be able to come up with an answer? If B is $100, then it would be Very good. Answer is correct. Okay, Emily. Emily is correct. Did, did we follow what Emily said? So I'm getting a $100 profit with eight targets. And if things are going this way, there is no way that I'll make a profit of $500 when I have six targets. Oh. Yes. I think it would be 12 tacos. Yeah. Now make a mistake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, still, true or false. <laughs> that doesn't change. Do make that correction. Um, this is false. How do we find the number of tacos that we? Um, give us a copy of 500. 12 times 5. Colin, correct? Colin says 12 times 5, 60 tacos. Is that correct? Oh, 
size of a taco is the same? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 12 times 5, um, 16. Um, that is another way of doing this. I have my hand here for a reason. Five hundred equals shifting x minus five x. Same equation: five hundred equal fifteen x minus five x minus twenty. Um, that would be ten x. Move that twenty to the other side. Five hundred and twenty x is fifty-two. What happened, Colin? So I didn't do the algebra right there. He didn't do the algebra. So if life were uh, that easy, I simply multiply 12 tackles by 5 and get an answer. Mm. I wouldn't be on, in this galaxy. I've gone a long time ago. What Colin forgot to notice is this one's got an intercept term. If that intercept wasn't there, then sure, the answer would be 60. We have an intercept, so it won't work. Good. Um, any questions? Okay.